When you first turn on your computer, it has no idea how to communicate with most of the hardware that's plugged into your computer. Your PC really only knows the basics. It can talk to a keyboard, it can show information on your screen, but when it comes to the more advanced pieces of hardware connected to your computer, it has no idea how to use any of those. Your operating system needs to be able to use something called device drivers, and device drivers are written to bridge that gap between the operating system and the hardware that's inside of your computer. Your device drivers are very specific to the operating system that you're running. If you have a printer connected to your computer, you will need device drivers for that printer that are specific to Linux, for instance. And if you're running Linux 32-bit, those are different drivers than if you're running Linux in a 64-bit operating system. If you're running different operating systems, you'll need different drivers for those operating systems as well. You'll notice if you ever call technical support, especially about a piece of hardware that you're having a problem with, one of the first things they'll ask you is, have you updated the drivers? Have you gone to our website? Have you downloaded the latest drivers and installed those? If you're using a very complex piece of hardware, like a video adapter, there are constant updates to those drivers. So they'll often ask you to update the operating system drivers for your computer to make sure that you've got the latest version of that running in your OS. If you wanted to see the drivers that were running on your system, you can go to this virtual file system called slash sys. This file system is not a separate set of files that's on your computer. It's instead a file system that we can see as human beings, but it's created dynamically for us as part of the operating system. If you look inside of slash sys, there are a number of folders inside of that. So for instance, slash sys slash bus will tell you information about the drivers installed for the system data buses in your Linux device. Slash devices shows you all of the devices that are connected to your computer. And slash module is going to give you information about kernel modules that are running on your PC. Let's look at the sys directory that's on my computer. If we look at all of the different directories inside of this, everything from block storage devices to firmware to kernel and power, we can drill down on any of these. For instance, Maybe we'd like to find out more information about a particular partition that's on our computer. We know that's going to be under the block directory. And if we list all the files in the block directory, there are a lot of different device drivers loaded for things like loop and RAM. And down here is SDA. That's the storage device that I have on my computer. Inside of SDA is also a number of files and directories. Here's SDA1 that happens to be the partition I'm interested in looking at. So let's look at SDA1. If we change into that directory, there are a lot of different files inside of there. And if we wanted to look at one of them, for instance, we can look at size, and that gives us information about the size of that particular partition. If we look at the start, we can see where that partition starts. If we want to see the stat, let's see what type of information is there. There's statistics that are inside of that. And these are the driver information that will communicate back and forth with applications so that they can access these devices, these pieces of hardware that are inside of our Linux device. In our Linux operating system, there's a couple of different ways that we can use to manage these different device drivers. One way is to compile the device driver into the kernel of the operating system itself. It becomes part of the kernel. You don't need any separate files or anything else that you'd have to work with. You can grab that kernel and use it on another system that has similar hardware. The changes to this, obviously, are a bit more involved. We have to recompile the kernel every time we would like to make a change to those device drivers. And obviously, the more device drivers you add to the kernel, the larger the kernel is going to get. So that may not be what we're trying to do. If we're trying to run a lean and mean operating system, we want to keep down the amount of bloated kernel that we're going to have on that system. And that's why we would want to use the other method of adding and removing device drivers through something called kernel modules. And as the name implies, these are modular. We can load them, change them, and unload them without having to recompile the kernel every time. These are loaded by the kernel, and you'll find them in a subdirectory 
under slash lib slash modules. There'll be a kernel version that you happen to be running. Underneath that will be a kernel directory and finally a drivers directory. And you'll recognize these because they will either have a dot ko or a dot o name as the extension on the file for that device driver. This makes it very easy to dynamically load and unload device drivers, make modifications and swap out newer drivers for old ones without having to recompile the kernel. Let's look at the drivers that are on my Linux workstation. I know they're going to be in the libmodules directory. And inside libmodules, you will also have separate subdirectories set aside for the different kernel versions that you might be running on your system. Maybe you've upgraded or downgraded to a different kernel. You may find there are different subdirectories here. And in my case, there's only one. And inside that, you will find there are also a separate set of files and subdirectories. The ones for the drivers that we're interested in are the ones under the kernel directory. And finally, the drivers directory. And inside the drivers directory is where all of those drivers are stored. If we wanted to look and see exactly what was configured on our computer and what was being stored, we can drill down into any of these sections. And they should be things that you might recognize. Things like DMA or Firewire. You can find there's IEEE 802.154, there's PCMCIA, there's Power, there's Target, there's Serial, there's SSB, there's USB. All of those drivers are installed here. So if you're finding that you need to upgrade a driver, you may want to upgrade, upgrade, for instance, a SCSI driver. Here's where all those drivers are located. You can see there's many different drivers for many different SCSI devices that you might be able to install on your computer. Many of these drivers on my system came with this Linux distribution. So I know that I can load a new piece of hardware. It might already have a driver available for it. But if it doesn't, make sure that you install that driver into these set of directories. And that way, you can load and unload those drivers to be able to use that piece of hardware. When we install a PCI-based device, maybe it's a PCI-based adapter card, those are usually using something called plug and play. We install the card, and your operating system and the driver that you load automatically sets things like the interrupt request number, the I.O. address area. You can look at I.O. port information. All of that is automatically set up for us. We don't have to even configure those things manually like you used to do back in the ISA bus days. If you wanted to see the configuration that was made for those, you can see it under the LS PCI. We're listing out the PCI configuration. And I usually like to use the dash V for verbose to get more information about those individual pieces of hardware that are on my computer. If you did need to make a change to those, there is a set PCI command that will help you with that. But I think most of us will find when we install a system these days, plug and play takes care of automatically assigning all of this information. We rarely have to go in and manually set any PCI configurations. Let's list out the PCI devices on my Linux device. I'm going to use that LSPCI with the dash V. I'm going to pipe this to the less command because there's generally a lot of information that's generated, and I might want to go through it a page at a time. You can see that you can get a lot of detail here. I can see host bridge information. Here's PCI information for P2X4, a virtual machine chipset for my IDE interfaces. If I page through a few more, there's my VGA controller inside of my system. And you can see for things like these SCSI storage controller, you can see the I.O. ports that have been assigned, the memory addresses that have been assigned. You can see the IRQs associated with that particular device. It really tells you everything you need to know about the PCI hardware configuration of all of those different components. Now that we know which drivers are installed onto the storage device of our operating system, it might be useful to know what drivers were in use right now in the Linux kernel. We can use the Linux command lsmod to show us which modules are loaded currently, and we can use another command called mod info that will give us more information about those specific modules. Let's look at the modules that are running on my computer. We're going to list the mod. And I'm going to pipe that off to the less command so that we can see everything. Here we can see the module name listed on the left side, the size of the module. You can see how many times that module is being used, either by a process or by another module. And you can see what module this is being used by. 
And you can see, for instance, there is the 802.1Q module that's used for basic networking. And you can see the size, and it's not being used by anyone. There is also a gratuitous ARP module, a GARP module that's used in networking that's being used one time, and it's being used by the 802.1Q module. So there's a dependency there where 802.1Q needs to have gratuitous ARP. And these dependencies can get relatively complex. For instance, the spanning tree protocol module is being used by gratuitous ARP. We know that gratuitous ARP is being used by 802.1Q. And then finally, for instance, there is the LLC module, the logical link control that's used for basic networking. That's your core networking piece that is being used by two modules, the gratuitous ARP and the spanning tree protocol. So there's a lot of intertwining there between all of these different kernel modules inside of our Linux operating system. Well, these different dependencies between the different modules now add a layer of complexity, especially if we want to easily remove a module and add a new module back. Maybe we need to upgrade a particular driver. That's an easy way to do it. But maybe we can't just pull that particular driver out. We may have to pull out all of the other dependent drivers and then finally remove the one that we're looking for. There's a Linux command called insmod to insert a module into that running kernel configuration. It does not, however, consider any of those dependencies. So you would have to manually figure this out on your own if you were to use that particular command. To remove a module, you would do the reverse by using the command rmmod. Now, these dependencies can be relatively complex. So you'll find that perhaps you don't use the insmod command very much. What a lot of administrators will do is first create a series of dependency maps by using the command dep mod, dependency mods. And that's going to create a map, a file that's on your Linux operating system that has a list of all these interrelationships, these dependencies between all the modules. And then most people use this more modern command called mod probe that allows you to add and remove modules from the kernel with this single command. But what's nice about mod probe is that it takes into account all of those individual dependencies. Let's install a new module into our kernel using the INS mod command. First, let's find a module that we'd like to use. I'd like to, for instance, load a module for a floppy disk drive controller. And first, you have to find that particular driver file. Now, we know our drivers are going to be in slash lib, slash modules, the kernel version that we're using, slash kernel, slash drivers. And the floppy driver happens to be in a slash block subdirectory underneath that. And if I list out, you'll see there is a floppy.ko file. That's my driver file for my floppy disk drive. And if I'd like more information on that, I can use the mod info command for floppy.ko, and it will list out all of the module information, all of the device driver information for that particular module. Now let's install the module. We use that insmod command. And for insmod, we have to specify the entire path to that particular module. So we know that it's in lib, modules, the kernel version, the kernel, the drivers, the block directory. And finally, we can specify the floppy.ko. And when we do that, it says that is the floppy drive FDA, FD0 is 1.44 megabytes. And now our driver is installed. Let's have a look at the driver. We'll do an LS mod to list out all the loaded drivers. I'm going to pipe that to less so that we can see this go through. And if we look through here, I'm just going to type in slash floppy so it will take us to that particular file. You can see slash floppy right at the top for the module, the size 61447, and it's not currently used by any process or any other module inside of the computer. Well, we now know that it's here, but perhaps now we don't want to use that particular module. We can use the RM mod module and then specify simply the name of the driver as it's listed in that LS mod command. And so RM mod floppy will now remove it. And if I go back and look at my LS mod, you can see right at the top, there's no longer a floppy driver loaded as a kernel module. With mod probe, we can use that single command to both install and remove kernel modules. But before we do that, we might want to build that dependency map by using the dep mod command. And I'm going to use some commands here to build the entire dependency map with the dash dash all. 
And then we have the dash dash verbose that I'd like to use just so we can see on the screen what's happening when it's building that dependency map. And as you can see, there is a lot of work that goes into building that particular dependency map. And the more complexities that you have on your system, the more drivers that are installed or available to be installed on your computer, you will find there's a lot more work that happens. You don't always have to run this dependency map every time you're going to install or uninstall a particular driver. But if you are making some pretty big changes on a system, you may want to consider reinstalling or recreating that dependency map before going through the process of installing and uninstalling particular modules. Now that that map has been finally completed, let's have a look at some different dependencies. For instance, we would like, for instance, to see that gratuitous ARP dependency. So I'm going to use the mod probe command, and I'm going to use some command lines options to show depends. That's going to show the dependencies and then simply choose the module I'm interested in knowing more about. And if I do that, it says the gratuitous ARP depends on LLC, STP, and finally the gratuitous ARP. So if I'm going to make any changes to gratuitous ARP, I also have to consider that LLC and STP will need to be removed first and then I can make changes to that gratuitous ARP driver. In our case, let's duplicate what we did last time with that floppy driver. If you recall, with the INS mod, we had to put the entire path of that driver in. But in this case, all I want to do is simply use the mod probe command and type floppy. And it gives us the same feedback as before, but we didn't have to put in that very long involved path. The mod probe command already knows where to look and how to load that particular module. And if we wanted to remove it, we'd use the same mod probe command. But in this time, we're going to use the dash R and the name of the module. And it's going to simply remove that module dynamically from the kernel configuration. You may find that you're not installing a lot of PCI-based adapter cards all the time. But one thing that is very dynamic on our PCs these days is installing and uninstalling or plugging and unplugging USB devices. And of course, those hot plug devices are plugging in and using hardware resources inside of our computer. So of course, there's a Linux command called LSUSB that will list out information about the USB devices that are connected to our Linux workstation. To view this USB information, we'll use that list LS USB command. And I'm going to do it with the dash V to give me a verbose breakdown of everything that's on my system. And I'm going to also pipe this to less because it's going to give us a lot of information on the screen. So the first thing is that it comes up with bus 001, device 001. You can see this is a root hub and the device descriptor in there of exactly how it's configured. I'll hit the space bar and go to the next page. So now you're going to get page after page of all of these different USB configurations, all of the root hub that are inside of your Linux device. And then we'll also see any USB devices that happen to be plugged in to those USB ports as well. So if you're having a problem reading or writing or communicating to something that you've connected to a USB port, using that LSUSB command can help you troubleshoot at least on the hardware side of what the operating system itself is seeing.